Welcome to the next video in the virus video series. This video is all about the multiplication of animal viruses. And you're going to notice some similarities between animal viruses and bacteriophages. But make sure as we go through the details of animal virus replication that you're able to keep the steps you know, separate. Um, but also noting any similarities. And there will be some key terms associated with animal virus replication that you'll want to make sure that you only associate with animal viruses. So there are six steps um, in the animal uh, replication cycle. So attachment, penetration or entry, uncoding, biosynthesis, maturation, um, also known as assembly, and release. Okay, so again, you'll notice some similarities in the names of the steps um, from our talk on bacteriophage. So with attachment, step one, um, the virion is going to attach itself to a receptor site on the surface of the host cell. Remember that host range talk that we had earlier? It's a very specific receptor that the virus is able to attach to. The next step, um, entry or penetration, um, there are actually three different ways that an animal virus can gain entry into the host cell. And that's gonna be dependent on the structure of the virus. Naked viruses, remember those are viruses without an envelope. Um, they have two different approaches to entering the cell. And then enveloped viruses also have two different ways they can gain entry into the cell. So for those naked viruses, um, they're essentially, either they're going to kind of have the capsid absorb to the cell surface, in which case the only thing that actually enters the host is the viral nucleic acid, okay? And in this situation, the capsid actually remains outside of the host cell, okay? Um, if other, the other approach that a naked virus can take is entering via endocytosis. And you're going to see a picture of what endocytosis looks on the next slide. But that's where the entire virus is going to be able to enter the host cell, not just its nucleic acid. With the enveloped viruses, there's um, a process called membrane fusion, where the um, envelope or the plasma membrane from the previous host is going to fuse with the plasma membrane of the current host cell, um, which again is going to empty the capsid and nucleic acid inside of the cell. Essentially, the envelope um, is kind of going away. And then the second approach is also um, receptor-mediated endocytosis. And so um, again, with that one, one of those glycoprotein spikes is gonna bind to the cell surface receptor and is gonna trigger endocytosis so that the entire enveloped uh, virion is going to gain access into the cell, okay? Um, the third step is uncoding, which is essentially where the individual components of the viral structure is going to fall apart, for lack of a better term. Um, because in order for the virus to take over the host cell machinery um, and copy the nucleic acid genome, it has to, the ribosomes and you know amino acids and all of that stuff, they need access to the viral DNA. You can't copy a piece of DNA without having access to it. Um, and so uncoding is going to essentially release the viral nucleic acid into the cytoplasm of the host cell. And normally host cell enzymes are going to actually degrade the capsid or the envelope, depending on the structure of the virus. Now, Real quick though, the uncoding step does not actually happen if the capsid of those naked viruses is left outside of the cell. So remember just a second ago when we were talking about step two, I said that sometimes those naked animal viruses, um, they enter the host cell when the capsid absorbs to the cell surface. So only the viral nucleic acid gets in. Okay, so for uh, with naked viruses that get in that way, they actually don't have an uncoding step. Biosynthesis is where there's the most variation among the animal viruses, as you will see shortly. 
Um, biosynthesis is when the viral nucleic acid is replicated and all the proteins associated with the virus are made during maturation or assembly. That is when the um, components, the individual components of the virus will spontaneously assemble into new viruses okay, through a process just like we talked about with bacteriophage. And then finally release. Um, there are two approaches here. Um, naked viruses are going to release by lysis, okay? And that's often because these viruses have a protein called lysozyme, uh, which is specifically able to dissolve the plasma membrane and or the cell wall, um, allowing the cell to lyse or kind of explode, rupture, um, so that the virions can get out. With our enveloped viruses, uh, they can exit via budding, okay, where they're literally just going to kind of push their way out of the host cell, but it's not going to cause the cell to die. Or they can leave um, via exocytosis. And then you're going to see pictures of these momentarily. Um, now, I mentioned that budding isn't normally lethal to a cell, but if there are, um, you know, thousands and thousands of viruses that are all pushing their way out of this cell, it can harm the cell, the cell, okay? So when the virus damages that host cell, but doesn't actually, you know, lyse it, uh, we say that they are cytopathic, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and look at some pictures of some of these steps. So first up is going to be attachment and entry, because once the virus attaches, it's going to enter the cell, okay? And so in this picture, we are looking at an enveloped virus, um, because if you look closely, let me go and get the pen handy. So this purple molecule, that is going to be the nucleic acid. Okay, again, I'm just gonna abbreviate that NA for nucleic acid. That's the genetic material. And then you can see here, the outline of the capsid. So that one's going to be a icosahedral. So there's the capsid. And then this structure right here is going to be an envelope. So this is the two mechanisms of enveloped uh, viruses. And um, so as you can see here, it's been, the entire virus is being taken in by endocytosis, okay? So, Here's the, the cell membrane right here that I'm tracing. And do you see um, how it's kind of taking in the viral cell? You can see here is I'm still tracing the edge of this cell. Do you see how it's kind of dipping inwards and it's essentially kind of grabbing that cell, okay? So now this outer layer right here, that's actually a vesicle uh, made by the host cell taking in um, the virus, okay? And so here's that intact virus right, right here. You can see the envelope right there, capsid right there, genetic material right there. And then this vesicle is essentially going to dump out uh, the virus. That's what you see here in number four. And so then here is just the capsid and the nucleic acid, which is going to essentially, quote unquote, fall apart. Uh, which is what uncoding is. Because remember, the goal is to make this genetic material accessible so that it can be copied and used to make more viral proteins, okay? The other um, mechanism of entry for enveloped viruses is fusion. And so as you see here, so again, we have the genetic material inside. You can also see that capsid and then there's this um, outer envelope. So it's going to attach to the host cell membrane. And then step two is where it's literally just fusing in. Notice that no vesicle is made, okay? It just um, kind of triggers the cell to just dump in the capsid with the genetic material, okay? So notice that in endocytosis, the original envelope came inside the cell as well, but with membrane fusion, the envelope never actually enters the cell. It is just the capsid and the genetic material. All right, so after, um, oh, and actually let me go back real quick. Notice that again, step three is uncoding, okay? So um, at this point, 
the genetic material is accessible via either uh, mechanism of entry. And now that that genetic material is um, accessible, it, the virus is going to take over the host cell's energy, amino acids, nucleotides, um, other enzymes, the ribosomes, which make proteins, and it's going to move on to the fourth step, which is biosynthesis. Now, we're going to make a separate video for that because there's just so much to it. Um, but please know that this next step, the biosynthesis step, the details of it are completely dependent upon the type of genetic material that the virus has, right? Because the virus needs a host and the host would be a living thing and all living things have DNA, okay? So DNA viruses are at a little bit of an advantage because we are going to already have everything the viruses need um, to start making more viruses. But with RNA viruses, because the host is never going to have an RNA genome like the virus, um, the virus has to have some extra proteins. And there's a few extra steps in there um, for the virus to, to uh, make all the things that it needs. So um, stay tuned for the next video. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions.